Hey everybody, how's it going? So today we're going to be working on fixing a MacBook that is not working properly. I look forward to showing you all what's wrong with this MacBook, and I look forward to making it work again with all of you. So this here is a machine that appears to be not turning on. This is an A1707 model MacBook. This is one of the 15-inch models from either 2016 or 2017. We're going to work on this together, and we are going to figure out what's wrong with it and then fix it. There are a few announcements. Announcements I'd like to make before we begin today's video. The first announcement that I'd like to make is a sincere thank you to Jesse Cruz for the work that he has been doing on the wiki. So as you know, one of the projects that I had, one of the small projects for Repair Preservation Group, was to make available as much info as humanly possible on how to fix things the same way that I have on this channel. And I've posted a lot on how to fix MacBook motherboards to this particular wiki. You can find on repair.wiki, there's all sorts of guides on how to fix, figure out and repair all sorts of common failures. Well, look at what he's posted for the iPhone 7. Look at the degree of troubleshooting information that Jesse Cruz has posted for the iPhone 7. Look at this. So you have the symptom on the left and the uh, issue, possible issue and repair on the right. Look at how detailed this is. Look at the amount of work that he has put in to really show you exactly how to fix many different problems on an iPhone 7. This is insane. The degree of accuracy, the degree of detail uh, for many, many different problems. This is beautiful. This is exactly what I'm looking for. And if you're someone who wants to do this for other types of electronics, do me a favor. Don't ask me if you can post an article. Just post an article. Don't ask if you can. Because if you don't do it, don't ask me post an article. And if you want to talk about an item that is really, really popular that a lot of people are having issues with and you want to work out an agreement for compensation because this is a really, really popular item that's really in demand that a lot of people uh, want to know how to repair, reach out to me, lewis at fighttorepair.org. That's lewis at fighttorepair.org. And I want to say thank you very much to Jesse Cruz for being one of the very, 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 very few people that actually responded to me when I was uh, emailing and trying to get people to uh, contribute to this. And I do hope that we can continue to get people to contribute to things like this. Uh, the next thing that I, I wanted to announce is a thank you. It's a thank you to Catherine Hauserman. I apologize if I'm mispronouncing your name. I butcher everybody's names evenly on this channel. She is a longtime viewer of the channel who really fixed a lot of the formatting in my beginner's guide. She's been watching the stream for probably four or five years now and just a very kind person in the chat. She went over this roster and repair training document that I provide. If you look in the description of any of my board repair videos, any of them at all, you will see that there are links to guides. And one of them is this guide over here that really tries to explain in a very, very kindergarten-like way basic electronics. So, for instance, how does a resistor fail? Well, you yeah, there. How does a capacitor... Like, here's a capacitor. Here's it letting AC through. Here's it blocking DC. Like, just really, really, really basic, super hyper basic things that I'm going over here. Or let's say how a DC to DC boost circuit works. I actually show you with little pictures how it works at each point in the circuit. We go over... Like current sensing circuits, we go over the one wire circuit. Uh, we go there's all different things that I, that uh, I that we go over in this. It's about 150 pages, and she actually took the time to go through this and fix uh, a lot of the formatting in this, so that the formatting made a little bit more sense. And that was a really really great thing. Uh, again, a lot of this is still kind of uh, you know funky looking because I you you could tell I made a lot of this in Microsoft Paint, but. I have a, you know, I'm trying to go over just some, some basics to try to get people to understand what I'm talking about. And uh, it's kind of like a kindergartenish uh, set of slides. But uh, she really went over this and, uh, and, and fixed a lot of the formatting to make it look better. So I just want to say thank you very much to Catherine for her hard work in making this document look better. You can see over here, like I go over how the ISL6259 circuit works, and I go over this in order of what happens like it kind of goes over a lot of the a lot of the basics necessary to kind of understand basic electronics well, you know how is a cap going to fail how is a resistor going to fail all that kind of and uh, just I, I really appreciate her taking the time to do that so that being said we are going to go on to today's board repair 
There's actually one piece that's missing in here. I think I had a how a cap fails, and that card appears to be gone. So I got to figure out what happened to that. Actually, never mind. Here we go. So yeah, like here's how like this is a cap blocking DC, and this is a cap pow. Yeah. So yeah, it's 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 it'll be very. It's supposed to be a non-intimidating way to introduce people to electronics repair without talking about you know. Uh, uh, formulas and coulombs and joules and all that kind of stuff so let's get on to the video topic over here let's get on to what's wrong with with uh with this thing so this is an a1707 macbook now the first problem that i let's see if you could see what the first problem is with this uh, i'm not sure if this is going to be high enough resolution i had to lower the bit rate because restream cries when you stream at a high bit rate and it lags like crazy, so I had to stop doing that. But I'm kind of curious, can any of you see where the issue is in this computer? Can any of you see something that just absolutely uh, makes me want to scream? I want to see if you can tell where it is. There's something in here that's absolutely beyond horrible that you should be able to see immediately. So full screen the video for a moment. Actually, you should be able to see this if you full screen the video. I just checked on my screen. Uh, the ribbon for the battery is unplugged. No, that was something that we got started doing when we took in the machine. Let's see if you can see. I want to see uh, how good your eyesight is. Because one of the important things when it comes to doing this job, it, a lot of it is going to be down to your eyesight to be able to see problems more so than being a genius that intuitively like knows this is the bad chip because of diode mode reading, blah, blah, blah. Uh, does anybody know? Does any, can anybody see it? I'm going to zoom a little bit more. We're going to get a little bit more zoom uh, until you guys see the problem. Okay, so th there we are at full zoom. I, I think that you should be able to see what the problem is at this point in time. Uh, let's see if anybody understands or gets it yet. While you guys are looking for where the problem is, I am going to take the rest of the screws out of the machine. Uh, the Pagliardo, that, that, that doesn't tell me. No, no, no. That, 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 see, saying it's broken or there's a short or any of that, you got to tell me what it is. Like that, that's being overly general. You haven't given me an answer. Loose chip, you're asking a question. You're not telling me. No. Can anybody tell me what's wrong? It's in the frame over here. I fully zoomed in and I upped the bit rate. Screw in the connector. Daniel Oliveira wins. This is not where a screw goes. This is not where the screw goes. So what is this connector for over here that has a screw in it? A little piece of metal that's going to short all the pins together. We are going to visit and see what that is in the schematic and the board view. So I'm going to open up a schematic for an 820-00928 board as well as a board view. And we are going to see what that connector is for. That's not very nice to put a screw in there because you're going to short everything together. So that's J6100, J6100. So what is J6100? That is a connector for, well, what do you have here? You have a main power rail, PP3V3 underscore G3 hot. You have ground. You have SMC reset L. So you could be shorting SMC reset L to ground. You could be sending 3.3 volts into any one of these BIOS lines. So SPI ROM. So what this is doing is this is connecting to our BIOS chip. This is going to be connecting to our BIOS chip over here, around or SPI ROM chip, if you want to be uh, hoity-toity about it. I know some people like to be hoity-toity and go, Lewis, that's not a PC. That is a MacBook. And on a MacBook, it is called the SPI ROM. Why are you mistaking it? Hmm. I, miss, oh, I thought I was missing the top button on my polo shirt that I use for my hoity-toity personality. Like the guy yesterday that said, Lewis, the, the circuit does not ask for electricity. It is supplied. If you want to be a truly pedantic schmuck, you would call it an SPI ROM chip instead of BIOS. But I prefer BIOS chip because I, I call it that. And you can... Uh, so we are going. To, so this is going to be communication with the BIOS chip. And you kind of need that for anything to get started and work. Now, I don't think you would have killed anything because the data lines for this SPI ROM chip are going to be based on 3.3 volts. And the highest voltage present at this connector is going to be 3.3 volts because that's what PP3V3 underscore G3 hot is. Even if you send PP3V3 underscore G3 hot into SMC reset L, which would reset the SMC, you must understand that that SMC underscore reset L is going to be pulled up by a, I imagine that's going to be pulled up to 3.3 volts at some point on the board. So some point on the board, you're usually going to see a pull-up resistor. Uh, this is kind of being a troll here and not showing it. Eh. Anyway, so th on the older machines, SMC reset L would be pulled up to 3.3 volts by pp 3 v 4 underscore G3 hot. I remember that from the, from the good old days. So 
Let's see if we get any difference in behavior. Let's see if the machine works once we've pulled out that screw. And again, how that screw got in there, who the hell knows? So I unplug the battery, as always, because I want to see how much power the board is taking uh, by itself. I'm not interested in how much power it's using to charge the battery or anything. I want to diagnose the board. The amount of power that it sends to the battery is going to be variable. It's going to be variable based on how charged the battery is. So that's not going to give me some any sort of static reading that I can understand. Now, the problem that was discussed with this computer is that it was stuck at 5 volts, 0 amps. And as you can see now, it is turning on, the fans are spinning, and most likely I am going to have a picture on the screen. I may not immediately because I had the device closed, so it's going to think that it is closed and not working. But yeah, you can see there's an Apple logo there. Uh, the backlight is off, obviously, because I had the computer closed for a short period while it was on the desk, so I'll just reboot it at some point and you will be able to see that, that yeah, so the, re the reason that this was not working is because somebody shoved a screw into a connector which did not allow BIOS communication and slash or may have been shorting SMC reset L to ground inside of the connector. A connector is not a screw hole. A, I repeat, a connector is not a screw hole. A connector is a connector and a screw hole is a screw hole. Why is there a board repair stream on my New York real estate channel? Oh, man. Yeah. Yeah, those are fun. I, I, I got a, a good number of comments yesterday going, you're, you know, you're going to have your subscribers go down, Lewis, because you're talking about uh, all these other things that have nothing to do with board repair, which is why people are here. And it's like, you, you realize people are here in spite of board repair, right? Uh, like Eli, the computer guy, talks about this a lot, which is that you're going, everybody lies. He kind of sounds like house with this. Everybody lies to you. And uh, it, it is kind of true. You know, I have, I have this thing called analytics, and I can click on any one of my videos, and I can actually see if it was a net positive for subscribers or a net negative. And board repair videos almost universally are a net negative for subscribers. So when I post them, the analytics will show that I lose subscribers when I fix a motherboard. Like, I shit you not. I, it is negative subscribers when I fix a board. And if I post too many board repair videos in a row, the, the, the channel will, will lose hundreds or up to 1,000 subscribers in, um, in a period of time. It, it's, it's, it's hysterical. But, so this here, as you can see, is now giving me an Apple logo and working. So the lesson to be learned from this video would be, do, please, can you tell the difference between a screw hole and a connector? There's a difference between a screw hole and a connector. Uh, when you put a screw hole into a connector, the screw is then going to short together the pins, which would keep BIOS communication from working, which would keep the device from working altogether. Now, obviously, I'd like to have someone, you know, do a full test, call them up, say, hey, did you spill anything on this? Why did you put a screw in there? Because then putting a screw in there means they were trying to reassemble it. If they're trying to reassemble it, that means they were taking it apart. If they were taking it apart, that means there was a reason they were taking it apart. And I want to know what the reason they were taking it apart was. They weren't taking it apart because it was, it was stuck at 5 volts and drawing 0 amps. It was stuck at 5 volts and drawing 0 amps as a result of the BIOS chip not working, as a result of SMC reset L being held down by a screw being in the connector. They were taking it apart for a different reason. And I need to figure out what that other reason is because if I deliver them the computer back like this, it's still going to have some other problem that they have not told me about because they've only told me about problem number one, but I need to know why they opened it to put the screw in there. The issue may be them telling me, I didn't put that screw in there, at which case I wash my hands with it and I'm not able to help them. So if I call them up and they say that they put a screw in and I explain this and they go, oh yeah, I, this screw, I must have screwed up and put the screw in there. While I was reassembling it to try to fix X problem, I can try to fix X problem and I can help them. If I call them up and they say, I never put a screw in there and this has never been opened by anybody else. At that point, I invoice for return shipping and send it back because I cannot help you if you don't tell me the truth. So we are going to move on to the next one. Hopefully you learned something here, which is do not put a screw into a connector. And again, thank you very much to Jesse Cruz for his contributions to the wiki. Thank you very much to Catherine Hauserman. And for, if you want to contribute to the wiki, don't ask me. Don't ask. Lewis, can I contribute something about this? Can I contribute something about Dell? Can I contribute something about Acer? Can I contribute something about a microwave? Can I contribute something about a car? Don't ask. Don't ask me. Don't ask. Just post the article. If even 0.1% of the people that I have asked me, can I post this type of article, who I've responded yes to, actually posted an article, that wiki would be the size of a an, uh, uh, 42-volume encyclopedia by now. Uh, I am more than happy to contribute 
all of the information that I have, and I encourage people here to contribute to an internal Slack channel that I then post to the wiki so that we can have as many answers for MacBook board repairs as humanly possible. I want to have as many answers for MacBook board repairs as humanly possible. I will contribute what I can contribute. If you contribute what you can contribute, then at the end of the day, at some point, one of us is going to have a repair that we need to do that we don't have an answer for, and we are going to be able to go here and get an answer. So in the short run, it's going to take a little bit of time for you to contribute solutions that you have. But in the long run, if we all post to this on a regular basis, it will be easier for us all to collectively do our jobs. It will be easier for end users to be able to perform repairs that they otherwise would have thought impossible. It kind of, you know, a rising tide lifts all boats. Uh, so I'm, I'm trying to get the that the trying to start raising, you know, pulling up the tide a little bit, and then I'm hoping that I can get other people to come along with me with these ideas. That's it for today. And as always, I hope you learned something. I'll see you all in the next video.